Okay, folks, and we are back. Oh, hold up. Okay, now we're back. Um, part two ensues. All right. Hold on one second. I want to see. Oh, we got somebody else in chat. I want to say hi to whoever that is. So, hello. Um, okay, so. I'm back to where we were. Um, I know I know three of the spirits here. Um, they're saying that there's five of them. Three of them are known to me because they live here. Um, like, they're here all the time. Uh, Daniel, El his wife, Eleanor, and their daughter, Brittany, uh, were farmsteaders here back in, like, 1800s, at least. Um, and from what I've been able to find out through research is that it, if they are who indeed I think they are they actually died in a barn fire um, and there was some uh, how shall I say uh, suspicions about it Something having to do with water rights. That's all I'm saying. Anyways. So. We've got those three. We've got Doug. And I'm trying to find out who this other female is. But I haven't gotten a name yet. So. Here we go. Enough uh, with the random voice stuff. Okay. Wind. Here. Throw. Hold on. I'm talking to the female here. What is her name? Beth? Did you say Beth? Yeah. Okay. Hi, Beth. Sorry about the random noise BS, guys. Um, makes things kind of confusing. I will do my best to identify it if it is just random whatever. That was random. 85 was random. This is going to get annoying real quick. Hey, let me ask you guys. Let me ask you guys. Um, do you think that you could talk over the SV1, the Spirit Box app, the other app I have? Sure. Okay, we're going to try it, okay? Be right back. Because that, that's going to drive me insane. You guys there? Hello? I heard a hello. I know it's probably easier to come through on the other device, but hold on. Let me let me try something real quick.
Okay, yeah. You guys still there? Alright, you know what? I'm going to try something different. Haven't actually tried this before. Uh, let's see, let me find it. Okay, is anybody here? If you talk on this device, I should be able to see the needle jump. try this okay is anybody here if you talk on this device I should be able to see the needle jump That's not working either. Um, God damn it. Let me find out what's going on because... For some reason... It's saying my card was declined when I tried to purchase that other app, and I know there's money on my card, so...
Okay, we're going to try a different one. This is actually called EVP Recorder. Oh, hold on. Who's here? Can you talk into this device in my hand? Do you have a message for us to pass on? I know Doug's here, and Beth, and Daniel, and Eleanor, and Brittany. Is anybody else here? Okay. Now I'm going to play this back and see if we got anything. Talk 
talking to this device in my hand. Do you have a message for us to pass on? here and Beth and Daniel and Eleanor and Brittany is anybody else here who's here yeah nothing okay Well, this sucks. Um, because evidently they won't come across the SV-1. And the spirit voice has got that random voice generator now attached to it, which is totally gay. So, I don't know what to do, folks, because, um... <sighs> Without that, I can't do EVPs. Really. Um... Yeah, I'm here. Four. Random. Four was random. Anytime you hear numbers and like an odd word that makes no uncle. sense, like uncle, it's considered okay. random. Yeah, that's just going to annoy me. Because it's actually over-talking, like, legitimate, legitimate stuff.
Can you guys talk through this? Enough is enough. I guess that's it um, for that tonight. So I figure out what the hell's going on. Because um, I don't know why it's declining my card. Maybe because I tapped it more than once. Which means it should be on my... My phone somewhere. But it's not showing on my phone anywhere. It's not showing anywhere on my phone. It won't even come up and search. So. I don't know. Don't know what to do. Because nothing is working. Well, and the one thing that is working, it always works, the spirit voice. I can't rely on it anymore because it's got that stupid voice random voice generator attached to it and I don't know how to shut it off or remove it I'm really actually kind of disappointed to be honest with you um, I think the next time we do this I'm actually going to use my digital audio recorder and do like burst sessions so, uh, what a burst session is by the way is like uh, really short EVP sessions where immediately after I review the EVPs. So for like five, ten minutes, they're about, I would do an EVP session and then I would play it back so that, that my audience can hear if there's responses or not. Um, it actually works really well uh, even during investigations in... It's actually a good way of doing it um, because it gives us something in the moment, like during the investigation, that we can play off of sometimes. Like, like we already know a lot because of, of like the research, the history. Um, but sometimes that's not everything. Uh, there's actually been been a couple times I'll, I'll tell you this story and then I'll, I'll probably end it for the night um, this was uh, God um, years ago now it was like 3-4 years ago I guess when I was with my former team uh, Pace which uh, is paranormal and cryptid expo exploration uh, 
it was actually a really great team at the time. Uh, and there were some personal differences, and I'm not going to get in that whole thing because I, I don't need to mudsling. Um, one of the members uh, was up to some shady stuff. And it, the end result was that I left and I formed Ghosts of Paranormal. And it's actually the best thing that ever happened to me. Uh, as far as the paranormal is concerned, because, uh, you know, I kind of need to be my own boss anyways, and, uh, forming my own team led to me working with the people that I work with, which are some of the best investigators I've ever worked with. Uh, a lot of them don't have as anywhere near as much experience as I do. You know, some of them do, but they're they're naturally gifted in certain ways, and it's awesome. But uh, anyways, I was with my former team, and we were invest investigating the Bisman Building, which is kind of famous uh, around Mansfield, Ohio. Because it's, well, it's been on my ghost story, like, I think twice, maybe three times. And, uh, oh, there's a lot of legend and lore about the place. Uh, one of which concerns this little girl named Ruthie Bisman. She was the daughter of one of the, uh, owners of the Bisman uh, business, which they were like um, a supplier for uh, grocery and and uh, uh, general stores to outlying towns, uh, all the way from like the 1800s up through like the 1940s. And I think they, they finally stopped doing that around 19... 40s, 1950s, but, uh, I believe it was in the early 1900s, like, maybe 1920s, uh, there was this girl named Ruthie Bisman, who was the daughter of one of, one of the, uh, the Bisman owners, and she was, uh, brutally killed, uh, murdered, in the building. They actually found her body, according to all I've been able to find out, anyways. Uh, according to the story, they found her body inside of a pickle barrel. And there was a lot of suspicion on one of their employees, a guy by the name of F.W. Simmons. And for years, people investigating that place automatically assumed that F.W. Simmons was this evil guy that inhabited the place and that he was responsible for her death and etc., etc. Ironically, uh, due to the suspicions, he was actually fired from his position there at, at the uh, Bisman building. It was actually he had just gotten fired. It was his last day of work, and he was leaving. <coughs> and he was up on the the fourth floor, and it had one of those old fashioned. It still does has one of those old fashioned. Uh, uh, oh, what do you call them? Uh, service elevators, like the kind where it's got the the big wooden. Uh, like ladder style door that slides up and down and uh, he was actually going down and somebody called out to him according to the story and he leaned his head out and the elevator uh, didn't stop moving and it killed him uh basically removed, you know, decapitated, removed his head, according to the story. 
Um, and it, that's like like the stuff that everybody operated under for years. And I don't know what possessed me to ask the question, but I asked it. I I was actually talking to Ruthie at the time, but I got an EVP from from actually both Ruthie and Simmons, uh, basically denying that he was in fact her killer. And, uh, that led me down a new avenue uh, of, of investigation in that particular story. And what I got from that, that investigation is that it was actually one of the Bismans that killed her. Because she was, like, mildly... Uh, mentally handicapped, um, probably autistic, but you know, in, in that day and age, like that, would have gotten most people locked up in a, in an asylum. You know, because they they didn't understand it. They thought it was a, uh, you know, some kind of thing to just you know, throw away, basically, and, and, uh, a lot of cases like that ended up in asylums, especially with autism, because they thought it was a form of insanity, they thought it was like, like schizophrenia or any other mental disorder, and it obviously isn't, um, but yeah, like like totally different direction than than uh, where everybody else is going with the whole thing, because a lot of people had had like this feeling of dread, you know, in certain parts of the building, and it was all attributed to this guy F. W. Simmons. Turns out it's not even him. It's not even him. That uh, you know, according to the evidence I got, anyways. It wasn't even him. And, and you know, there's more examples of that. Um, uh, another case in point, really quick. I've got about eight minutes left, so I'm going to use as much of it as I can with another story. Uh, another case of that is actually from uh, a place you may have heard me talk about before called uh, Brown Ella Cottage. It's actually a uh, uh, almost mansion-style house that was built for Bishop William Brown, who ironically was the last man ever convicted of heresy in modern times in in America, anyways, I mean, I don't know what it's like, you know, in Europe or Asia. People could be, you know, branded heretics every day over there. I have no idea. But in America, he was the last guy to be convicted of heresy. Um, wasn't like a jail time scenario that I'm aware of. It just resulted in him being removed from the Lutheran Church where he was a bishop of. Um, and the cause of that uh, really was the death of his wife, uh, Ella. Uh, they also shared the home with Mary. And there was this dark, you know, uh, very negative uh, lore about him, supposedly... Uh, <clears throat> Supposedly killing Mary and being involved in in witchcraft and all this other stuff and while well, yeah that that it, he wasn't exactly the sanest guy uh, near the end of his life due to the death of his wife and all that. Um, 
he wasn't really like evil uh, I found out um, no that's what I found I, I'm not going to talk about what other people found that's their business but from what I found he wasn't an evil guy he was just lost he lost his way is what it was and uh, you know he he started as a man of faith and then he lost that faith and and his uh, basically everything he did was to a way to strive to find something new to have faith in and yeah he went off the deep end and did things he probably shouldn't have done including writing a children's book about communism I'm not kidding you there's actually boxes of this book up in the attic of this place of a book called communism for boys and girls I shit you not the weirdest damn thing I've ever seen. Anyways. So, yeah. Um, you know, he's painted as like, like this dark, evil guy. And that's not necessarily the case. Yeah, twisted and hurt and lost. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Maybe even a little bit insane. But evil? I didn't see it. Um, however, having said that, I think there is something evil there. Down in the basement. Uh, I'm not the not the kind of guy... Uh, in fact, I've said this many times... That will jump at every shadow he sees. In fact, in my experience... Shadow figures, which most people... Unfortunately, attribute... Negative aspects to... Are just a ghost they're, they're the same as a full body apparition only it takes some less energy to be a shadow than a full bodied apparition and because with the shadow they don't have to form details they can just give you kind of a general idea but anyhow um yeah there is one of those rare exceptions though down in that basement that was throwing rocks at me and this lady that was there because uh, we were hosting a ghost hunt there once again was with my former team and you you could feel it like like when something really truly is evil or negative you can feel it you know it it's a primal instinct there is no denying it because you feel that chill. Whether you're afraid of it or not doesn't matter. Because you're still going to feel that chill. That chill that just runs down your spine. Like, to some people that equals fear and running away. And You should never do that, by the way. Ever, ever, ever. If you run into any entities that are evil... The best thing you can do is put your foot down and tell them to get the fuck out of your house. Because ownership is everything. And that's number one. And number two, they feed off fear. So if you're not showing fear, there's nothing for them to feed on. And they'll probably just move on anyways. But you have to mean what you say is the trick. What you need to do, regardless of what it is, even if it's a demon, what you need to do is believe in yourself. Believe in whatever higher power you believe in, but believe in yourself and believe in the fact that it cannot hurt you unless you let it. Because, sorry to tell you, but they're like vampires in that way. If you don't allow them in, they're not allowed. 
they can't cross that threshold unless you let them. But that takes willpower, and unfortunately not everybody has it. Okay, folks, I've only got about a minute left, so I want to say uh, thank you for tuning in. Tune in next week. I don't know exactly when, what my work schedule is next week yet. Um, I'm going to have to call and get that information tomorrow. But uh, I will let you know. Hopefully, it'll be same day, same time next week. Um, and if it's at all possible, I might just do a later, uh, Monday and Wednesday show, but it would be like 10, 11 o'clock or so by the time I could come on. Anyways, until next time, I pack my tribe. Peace. Out.